This video is sponsored by Springboard, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. But in the meantime, I just want to say hello. How are you? You can probably tell from the unfamiliar decor that I'm in a hotel, and uh, I just haven't had much time to make videos recently, which is why uh, there haven't been any for a couple of weeks or so. And now I'm here in this hotel room, I've got a little bit of extra time and I can't go out because of the virus. I can't really do anything other than stay in the room. And so I wanted to make a video. I've got my camera here with me and I wanted to make a video about plotting in Python because there's a new, well, newish Matplotlib Finance API, which makes plotting share prices really easy. And I think it's a really nice introduction to plotting in Python. Uh, it requires pandas and matplotlib and also the matplotlib finance uh, module. So you'll need to make sure you've got all those installed. But it really is very easy. And you can do all sorts of things like an open, high, low, close chart. You can do a candlestick chart or even a point and figure chart really very easily all in one line. And I think it'd be a really nice little project well, not quite a project, but a, a nice little task for uh, someone just starting that wants to start plotting share prices. And so that's what I thought we could do today. It's going to be a tutorial style video. So let's go over to the computer and get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get some data. And I've downloaded from Yahoo Finance the Amazon share price over the last year. Uh, and the way I found that was just go to Yahoo Finance, uh, search for Amazon, and then uh, if you go to this historical data tab, you can download it here. I mean, you can use any data, share price data that you're interested in, really. Once you've downloaded that, I'm going to be doing this in a Jupyter notebook, but you know, you can do it however you like, really. So let me just call this uh, Amazon share price and. Uh, change the name there. So what are you going to need? Well, uh, you're going to need to import a few things here. So first of all, you're going to need to import uh, pandas. So we will import pandas as PD as always. You're also going to need to import MPL finance. So uh, let's do that. And obviously, you're going to have to have installed uh, these modules. Um, so if you haven't, if you go down to the description, I'll have put some links in there for you to follow the instructions. And uh, we just want to be able to display matplotlib in line in this Jupyter notebook. Whoops. Uh, so let's just do that too. Mat plot lib uh, and then in line there okay so if we execute that uh, we should be good to go All right so the first thing I want to do is import the data uh, so let's create a variable name uh, and make that uh, the name of the CSV file that we've just downloaded uh, make sure you're in the right location otherwise you'll have to put the path here and you might want to use uh, OS the the Python package OS to do that uh, but I know that I'm in the right spot here so I can just uh, import it like this uh, and then okay if we type data uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to create a data frame uh, and we're just going to read in the CSV file. So let's do that CSV and we're going to read in this file here. Now we could put a few other parameters here that would do everything in one go. I want to take you through it step by step. Uh, so we're going to read the data in uh, which we'll do now. And then we'll take a look at what we've got. So this is a data frame. It's 250 rows by seven columns. And we have these columns here. And you can see that it's automatically indexed it with these numbers here. But really, we want this date column as the index. Uh, and we will do something about that shortly. The first thing I like to do when I import data is just take a look at it just to see what we've got using this info uh, method here. So if we run that we can see we've got a little summary here of the data and the data types which is useful and crucially this date 
column here it's not a date type it's it's just a, an object which pretty much means it's a string so we've got floats and an int for the volume but this needs to be a date object a date time object so we'll change that and as I said we could just do this in one line when we read in the CSV but I want to explain to you what we're doing here and why this video is sponsored by Springboard are you looking to break into data science but you're not sure where to start. Springboard has you covered with their data science prep course. With a unique one-to-one -one approach, you'll learn the fundamentals of data science, like programming and statistics, and work on real-world projects from the start. All with the guidance of a personal industry mentor. If you're interested, you can learn more by clicking on the link in the description. So what we'll do now, oh, actually, before we do that, why don't we have a look at the columns as well? Sometimes when I've downloaded um, data from uh, Yahoo, the columns have had white space in front of the names, and that can be a little bit annoying, and sometimes you have to change that. But here, we don't have any white space, and they look fine, so we can carry on. So let's do that now. So what we want to do now is convert the date uh, the date column to a date time column uh, because at the moment it's uh, an object which is essentially a string. So if we say data dot date and that's how we access this column in this pandas data frame equals pd uh, and now we're going to use a method called or a function called to date time which will convert the data dot date column into a date time column so if we now do this and have a look uh, and execute that you'll see now that we have a date time type data type rather than before we had an object so we're halfway there we now just need to make this index the date index we need to make that our index of our data frame rather than this just in this index that pandas added automatically because that doesn't really mean anything and it won't be we won't be able to plot that okay so what we're going to do now is say data which is the name of this data frame equals data dot set uh, index and don't forget if you're in Jupyter you can always use the tab uh, key and that will bring up any commands that you can use and we will put date so now we have set the date index the the date column rather as the index and if we just have a look now at this data frame you can see now we've got this date column here which is our index which is exactly what we wanted okay so we have the um, we have the the data now in a form that is useful for us and we're going to use this API this MPL finance API and it's very easy to use so you've got your data and you just type MPF which is our reference to the module dot MPL uh, I beg your pardon, dot plot rather, uh, and then data. And if we just execute that, you can see there that we don't really have to do very much at all to get the plot that we're looking for. But we can do more than what we've done here. There is a little bit of sort of fine tuning that we can do. So if we want to display the volume, let's do that now mpf dot plot and then we'll plot our data uh, and we're going to make this time we'll make it a line plot because uh, that will be easier to see on this scale and we'll have volume equals true and that's all you have to do to plot the volume and here we go now and you can see now we've got a line plot which is different to this open high low close plot that we have and we also have the volume so you can see it's done some things for us here it has labeled the axes it has rotated these labels as well okay let's take a look at a single month now how do we do that well if you can remember your time series in 
pandas, really that's quite easy. So we just say data and then we specify the month that we want to plot, which is done this way. So let's plot the March data. So if we just put the month, we refer to the month here because it's a time series now, pandas will know what to do and we'll plot the volume as well and we'll make that true. And if we, whoops, silly me. Okay, and there we have now an open, high, low, close chart uh, with the volume on it just for March. Now, what about if we want uh, a candlestick chart? All right, well, we just type MPF dot plot, and then we have data. In fact, why don't I just copy and paste this? That would be easier, wouldn't it? I will do that that and we will specify the type as a candlestick well it's a candle actually just a candle and if we execute that we get a candlestick chart which should be familiar to you what else can we do well if we just copy and paste this we can add a moving average to that so I will just do that here 2020 let's go up to uh, July and we can put M MAV here for moving average if we make that equal to let's say 20 whoops 20 and now execute that we get a nice moving average on there as well. But we can do more. I don't like these axes with these gaps here. Uh, and if we want to change that, but that can be done in matplotlib. Uh, you can have tight axes there, um, or a tight axis rather. But here you just put tight layout, I think is what it is. And then make that equal to true. And we then don't have the, the gaps between the the no data and the and the axis. There's more that we can do, so I will again just copy and paste this and put that there. And let's now we're gonna start gonna start getting quite long this line. So I'm just gonna tidy it up a bit by doing this and that okay uh, what do we want to add now well we can change the size of this and again this is something you can do in matplotlib it's a slightly different command it's fig ratio and that is equal to let's have 20 by 12 and we will just do that and what else oh we can add a title as well so if you want to add a title you can do that uh, let's add that here so let's have um, title equals Amazon whoops Amazon price 2019 2020 and we'll just put that there like that and I'll try to keep this consistent. Okay, and let's execute that. And so now we have this title here. So one last thing is in matplotlib, you may or may not know that you can change the style of the look of the plots that you do. And you can do that here as well. So if we now add one final parameter here we can have style uh, equal to yahoo and then we execute that and we get this look here all done so now i'm gonna lie down and read my kindle i'll see you next time bye bye